Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment unfiltered. Well, tomorrow's Wednesday. It is. And we have our Wednesday evening services, and I'm looking forward to it because you've been taking us through a series on spiritual warfare mm -hmm. and specifically have been looking at each weapon. Tomorrow, you'll be taking us through the shield of faith. And what I thought was interesting about the language that's used in the Bible, it says, above all, take up the shield of faith for it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one mm -hmm. or the devil. And so when it means above all, is it the most important weapon? In addition to, when it says, it, and, uh, and above all, it's just a, it's a literary uh, way to to continue a thought and develop it a bit further because you at first reading might say this must be the most important thing when in fact it's uh, it's one of the things because the armor is to work together mm -hmm. and so he, he's making a, a point emphasizing the need for this sh this shield now as we look at that <clears throat> concerning the shield of faith tomorrow and we'll be looking at it closely um the uh, roman soldier had two different shields one shield was a round shield a small shield and that small shield that they had would be used for a uh, close-up hand-to-hand -hand kind of combat but the other shield and this is the shield that's being spoken of in uh in ephesians 6 the other shield is a, a large oblong oblong shaped uh shield that uh you know was around four feet in height and around two two or three feet and so they would use it in in a variety of ways including including um working together with the other soldiers so when the darts of the enemy and they were they were large darts you know larger than lawn darts <laughs> and they would ignite them they would wrap them with uh with uh, with cloth or something that would remain ignited and then from a distance from different directions would hurl them in order to cause distractions and break ranks. Um, what would happen is uh, the, the shield was made of leather normally and it would have the capacity of quenching the, the flame so that it doesn't burst into flame and ignite him. If, he hit, if it hit him, it could do him great damage. And so when all of these darts and distractions are coming, they would uh, use the shield, you know, and so there were times when that they would actually form a group where some would put their shields down and the others would put them above, and that way they were able to protect the uh, the group of soldiers that were in, involved in combat. And so, <coughs> excuse me, tomorrow as we gather, I'm going to be sharing of the indiv individual. Um, responsibility that I have to make sure that my armor is properly secured. But I also want to emphasize the fact that we are a fighting unit. I think that what has happened today, at least in the church, it seems that we have an awful lot of Christians who have forsaken the assembly of themselves with other believers. Some who are even watching right now perhaps haven't been in a live service for a long time, even though they may not even realize this, but even a couple of days ago, um, Biden stated that the uh, that this pandemic is over, and so fact is is it's time for the church to come back because we're supposed to be a fighting unit. We're, we're working together, and so on. On one hand, we have the individual responsibility of donning our our armor. On the other hand, we need to understand that as a unit, we're protecting one another as well as fighting for the cause of Christ in against a demonic opposition and all of that. And so, yeah, the, the shield of faith, uh, the awareness of who God is and the promises of God and how they apply to us and how you can apply those promises to various cir circumstances and situations is very important to know. And also, uh, I'll be pointing out that the fiery darts that already have been basically uh, enumerated for us from the first chapter up to the sixth chapter when Paul is speaking about the various weaknesses of the flesh, the divisions that can take place and, and the gossip and, and the various things. I'll be pointing those out very briefly, but sometimes when we, we ask ourselves, well, what is a fiery dart? Well, Paul's already been dealing with those things. The enemy has already been launching those attacks against the Ephesians and uh, continues to launch those long distance attacks against us. 
And so we'll be using the shield of faith. It is something that we are supposed to have already become aware of. It's something that we use for those individual battles. We've already sunk into the armor, but we take up these these things at the moment of conflict. And there are times that you, you have to put the shield of faith before you or above you, but you do that normally as a unit. You can do that as a unit, and I, I want to make that application tomorrow. And and the, just the name of it, <clears throat> shield of faith, is that there's a act of faith that we must perform. We exercise. We, we exercise our faith. There's a there is a passive faith that went in what in which we rest in the things of God and passively we rest but there is also the application of faith that 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 under conflict and various other things we we have to make sure that we have applied that to our life in in its active form so yeah we'll be seeing that tomorrow and then tomorrow also church family will be celebrating communion yes after the bible study so I invite you friends and family to come out and join us and uh this has been proven to be a very good study. Uh, I know a lot of people are going through warfare oh, yes. and uh, many challenges. But as you mentioned, you, you said something before, as, as you made an application I thought about the other day, is that uh, you had put a, a specific, I don't know if it was a game or something on pause, mm. and found out the news about the game mm-hmm. and, uh, and watched it with a different anticipation. Mm-hmm kind of a different perspective yeah. and mm-hmm. and uh, I've been thinking about we may be going through the warfare in the game but we already know who won the game's over the game's over mm-hmm. and uh and so I was thinking about that as as uh we've been going through this I know many people are going through a lot of many things but we've won in Christ in Christ we, we're and, victors and we get to celebrate that by taking communion amen so come on out church family we'd love to have you uh, we're still taking sign-ups for Israel. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, the list is growing. It's growing, right? I got yeah. a, uh, an account today, and we have quite a number of people mm-hmm. going. And yeah, we do. I want to encourage you guys to come out and join us. You can actually go to our website, cc, calvaryccv.org. Go to our events tab. Scroll down. You'll see a, a picture that says Israel. Click on there. You can register. All the information's there. There's a countdown. It's like 170 days. Really? Uh, l- less than six months. Yeah. And so we would love you guys to come join us. So... We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pastor David, thank you so much for sharing with us. God bless you guys, and thank you for tuning in.